Dr. Chris, and today I'm talking about why the Denver Broncos outside linebacker Vaughn Miller is probably out for the 2020 NFL season even before it started. This was not the way that the Denver Broncos were hoping to start the season, so let's talk about why this injury might be so problematic for both Miller and the Broncos. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. If you recently subscribed to my channel, Thank you for becoming a part of the Intern Eye. Welcome to my channel where I explain orthopedic injuries and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. If you're interested in sports injuries, how they happen, and how they will affect your favorite athletes, then this is the channel for you. So let's discuss what happened with Vaughn Miller. Who is he? What happened? Why is this not so great news for Miller or the Denver Broncos? If you want the answers, then stick around as I dive into this discussion. If you don't know who Vaughn Miller is, let me show you. Oh, he's knocked down from behind, hit by Von Miller. It's a good job here covering up Dalvin Cook. 100 meter sprinter, you get two hands on you by the tight end. Von Miller is an outside linebacker for the Denver Broncos. He was the second overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft. He is an eight time Pro Bowl selection and is considered one of the best defenders in the league. In 2015, he was selected as the Super Bowl MVP in the Broncos' defeat of the Carolina Panthers at Super Bowl 50. And in the first week of September 2020, before even a single game had been played, Miller was injured during practice. 2020, I think that we've had quite enough of you by now. You can leave any freaking time. While I do not have video of the injury itself, the injury was considered to be unusual, having been described by Miller himself as freak. It occurred on the last play of an indoor non-contact practice. Miller was able to walk off the practice field but stated that something did not feel right. Initially, it was not clear what type of injury he had suffered, leaving some to speculate that he had possibly suffered an injury to his Achilles. However, an MRI the following day revealed that Miller had suffered a perineal tendon injury. Surgery was recommended by the team physician. But Miller sought a second opinion from a foot and ankle specialist, Dr. Robert Anderson. Unfortunately for Miller, it appears that Dr. Anderson shared the team physician's opinion. Vaughn Miller was expected to undergo surgery to stabilize his perineal tendon imminently. So what's the deal with the perineal tendon? How is it injured? How are the injuries treated? And when can we expect Vaughn Miller back on the field? if ever. Perineal tendons are a group of tendons that are located on the lateral or the outside aspect of the ankle. They run behind the fibula and connect the perineal muscles on the outside aspect of the lower leg to the lateral aspect of the fifth metatarsal in the foot. These muscles act to evert the foot and plantar flex the ankle. Given the manner in which pass rushers like Miller attack from the edge of the formation, it is not surprising that an injury may occur to these tendons as the defender pushes off the lateral aspect of their foot and drives towards the quarterback. The typical mechanism of injury is rapid dorsiflexion of an inverted foot, which can cause an injury to the tendons themselves or the superior perineal retinaculum, a cover that holds the tendons in place behind the fibula. Subluxation or dislocation of the perineal tendons can lead to longitudinal tears in the tendons. These injuries are best imaged with an MRI, which can accurately demonstrate the location and the grade of the injury. Patients often complain of clicking, popping, and feelings of instability or pain on the lateral aspect of the ankle. Patients may demonstrate swelling behind the lateral malleolus and tenderness over the perineal tendons. Injuries to the perineal tendons may be treated non-operatively or operatively. Non-operative treatment is indicated for acute injuries in non-professional athletes. This type of treatment involves casting the ankle with the tendons in a reduced position for approximately six weeks. Physiotherapy is performed after surgery to restore ankle range of motion, strength, and proprioception. The overall success rate with this type of treatment ranges from approximately 20 to 50%. So, not so high. Operative treatment is indicated for acute injuries in professional athletes, acute dislocations that are associated with longitudinal or lengthwise tears of the tendon, and chronic or recurrent dislocations of the tendons. Surgical treatment involves a number of different procedures, depending on which of the perineal tendons is involved. Surgical options for instability of the perineus longus tendon include acute repair of the superior perineal retinaculum with deepening of the fibular groove, 
groove deepening with soft tissue transformation, or osteotomy of the fibula, where the fibula is cut in such a way as to make it harder for the perineal tendon to escape. This is good, is this animals? Surgical options for injuries of the perineus brevis tendon include core repair of the tendon, tendon debridement and tenodesis to the longest tendon, tendon reconstruction with allograft, debridement and tendon transfer with the nearby FHL tendon, or calcaneal osteotomy for some patients. Instruments? That's great. Given the suddenness of this problem for Miller, I suspect that he suffered an acute injury to the superior perineal retinaculum with a dislocation of his perineus longus tendon at the same time. A tweet from Ian Rappaport suggests that this was the correct diagnosis. The perineal instability led to Miller's sensation of something not feeling right. After discussing options with two orthopedic surgeons, Miller elected to proceed with surgery. Rappaport reported that Miller underwent surgery on September 11th and stated that it had gone very well. With luck, the injury involved only the superior perineal retinaculum or sheath and not the tendon as well, which would translate to a shorter timeline for recovery and return to play. With this scenario, there is a possibility that he could return even as early as later this season. Former NFL physician David Chow recounted in an article the history of several NFL players, including Luis Castillo, who had suffered similar injuries mid-season and who were able to return to play after surgery within the same season. However, were the tendon itself also to have been injured, then the recovery timeline would be considerably longer, effectively putting Miller out for the entire 2020 season. Normally, recovery from surgery following this injury would be in the order of three to six months, allowing time for surgery, cast immobilization, and the ensuing physical rehabilitation to be completed. In the end, only time will tell where Miller will end up. So, if you were wondering, that is the reason why Vaughn Miller is probably out for the 2020 season. I need a moment. This leaves the job of rushing the edge up to Malik Reed and Jeremiah Atuku. And the Broncos are hoping that they are up to the task. So now you know. Support what I do, join the channel or my Patreon. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris. Not your everyday or go. Just a flesh wound.